Now, my lips were moving and you didn't hear me talking, so I'll do it all again. It's been a long time. We're back. It's the big juicy quiz. Yes, old Bojo has decided to have another Locky Downy Junior, so we've decided to bring back the big juicy quiz to keep you all entertained in the meantime. Five rounds, a hundred points up for grabs because there's some very special bonus questions. So grab yourself a pen and a piece of paper and a teammate on the Zoom. And hello to you all on YouTube and on Facebook. This is the big juicy quiz. Can you tell I'm stalling for time just to give you a chance to grab the vital ingredients all the questions will pop up on the screen so you can uh, read them carefully if you don't understand and all your favourite rounds are back. Oh yes indeed. So we're going to start this week with a whole round on pantomimes. Yes, a whole round on pantomimes because it's pantomime season. And if you haven't been to a pantomime yet, then I suggest you check out dickwittington.co.uk where you'll find a very special pantomime with some friends of mine. So, how well do you know your pantomimes? Ten questions, one point for each correct answer. By the way, did anybody hear me on Radio 5 Live? I hope you did. Here we go then. Question one. We're going to start you off easy because I know your brains might be a bit addled after uh, going back to work and all of that socialising you managed to do on Christmas Day. Question one. What told Dick Whittington to turn again? What was it? What told Dick Whittington to turn again? Write it down. Your questions will all, ca your answers will all come at the end of the quiz. Okay, question two. In a traditional, and notice I have underlined it, pantomime, does Maid Marian appear? Which traditional pantomime does Maid Marian appear? Don't fall into the trap. Think about those traditional pantomimes. Question three. In Cinderella, what is the name of Prince Charming's friend? No rude answers. His friend or consort. What's his name? Write it down. Your next question of pantomimes. In Jack and the Beanstalk, what does Jack get in exchange for his mother's cow? You remember he sold the cow, but what did he get in return? Yes, it's a whole round on pantomimes. Oh, yes, it is. Leave a gap for you to fill in your own jokes. Next question. What is the name of Aladdin's mother? What is the name of Aladdin's mother? Write it down. The answers will be at the end. And don't forget some bonus questions coming so you can build up those scores. Okay, your next question. When Sleeping Beauty pricked her finger on a spindle, what happened to her? What happened to Sleeping Beauty when she had a little prick? And what does Cinderella's fairy godmother turn into a coach? You know, that bit where she turns a whole load of things in the kitchen. 
he said, trying to help. What did she turn into a coach? And here's a tricky one. We thought we'd throw in a tricky one. Who is the sweetheart of Harlequin in English pantomime? In English pantomime, there are two characters who used to always appear. One was Harlequin, but what was his girlfriend's name? Mm. Who ate the gingerbread house? That's your next question. Who ate the gingerbread house? It's got to be in a pantomime, remember. Who ate the gingerbread house? And what is the name of Aladdin's nemesis? What is the name of Aladdin's n enemy? In the pantomime, Aladdin. I swear that sausage is moving now. Never used to move. So there are your 10 questions on pantomimes. How well did you get on? I'll give you a few seconds to have a little think. So a quick recap for you of your Planet One questions. Number one, what told Dick Whittington to turn again? What was it? What was it? Number two, in which traditional pantomime, remember, think pantomime, does Maid Marion appear? Number three, in Cinderella, what's the name of Prince Charming's friend? He's got a little friend. What's his name? Number four, in Jack and the Beanstalk, what does Jack get in exchange for his mother's cow? Number five, what's the name of Aladdin's mother? Number six, when Sleeping Beauty pricked her little finger on the spindle, what happened to her? Number seven, what does Cinderella's fairy godmother turn into a coach? What was it? Number eight, who's the sweetheart of Harlequin in English pantomime? Number nine, who ate the gingerbread house? Naughty people. And number ten, what's the name of Aladdin's nemesis? Those are your first ten questions. All about pantomimes. And without further ado, uh, we'll move on to round number two. Oh no, sorry, bonus question, bonus question. Ten points. Ten points up for grabs. What is the title of the most successful single, by that I mean record, ever made what's the title of the most successful record ever made worldwide if you know that that will get you 10 bonus points it says so right there
as always, if you don't know, it's worth a guess. It's always worth a guess. Right, your next round in our brand new lockdown quiz is tricky food and drink. Tricky because they're tricky. I'll start it off easy with the pantomimes. Now we're back to good old tricky questions. Number one. The majority of Trappist beers, that's beers made by monks, are brewed in which country? Always worth a guess. The majority of Trappist beers, that's beers brewed by monks, are brewed in which country? Number two. The name for which fruit stems from a native Central American word for testicle? Can I say that? Apparently, I have to. Which name for a fruit stems from a native Central American word for testicle? My advice, if you don't know, is to think of fruits from Central America that look a bit like those things. I said it was tricky. I was not lying. Number three, which carbonated beverage contained the mood stabilizing drug lithium all the way until 1950? So Ever think on those fizzy drinks, which one do you reckon had lithium in it? Number four, a combination of star anise Cloves, fennel, cinnamon and susan pepper is better known as what? If you were in the kitchen right now, you'd have a look and you'd see a bottle, but it wouldn't say a combination of star anise, cloves, fennel, cinnamon and susan pepper. What would it say? How much cooking have you been doing during the lockdownies? Next question, the name for which Indian curry dish prepared with pulse stems, no, prepared with pulses, stems from the Sanskrit word meaning to split. How good is your ancient Indian, the word to split in Sanskrit? is also the name of an Indian curry dish prepared with pulses. Next question. Which hot trademark or brand name is closely associated with the Milkenny Company? Where have you seen that? name. I'll give you a clue, it's on something hot. Which hot trademark or brand name is associated with the Milkenny Company? Milkenny Company. I've been corrected by the elves and nobody likes that. Think of something hot you've got in the kitchen. Send someone to the kitchen. Look at all the bottles. Right, next question. What is the name of the Middle Eastern dip or spread usually made with chickpeas, sesame paste, garlic, lemon juice and salt? Yummy, yummy. What's the name of the Middle Eastern dip or spread? or main course, if you're like me. Usually maybe chickpeas, sesame paste, garlic, lemon juice, and salt. If 
You know what it's called? Write it down. Right. I think this is number eight. With one word, complete the following quote from Charles de Gaulle. How can you govern a country that has 246 varieties of what? If you know who Charles de Gaulle is, you're pretty much on to a winner, I reckon. If you don't, well, it's always worth a guess. In next question, what is the main ingredient in tahini? What is the main ingredient in tahini? Have a guess. Go on, have a guess. I can see you scratching your head from here. Other than nutmeg, which other spice is obtained from a nutmeg tree? Mm. Other than nutmeg, because that'd be obvious, which other spice is obtained from a nutmeg tree? And I feel it is my duty, being the first quiz back in lockdown free, the return of the Hancock to give you a little clue and a little clue is you think of this more as a weapon than a spice mm. good clue good clue And those are your questions on tricky food and drink. I shall now give you some time to think. Let's run through them again, just in case anybody needs any recaps. We had, number one, the majority of so-called Trappist beers, that's beers made by monks, are made in which country? Number two, the name for which fruit stems from a native Central American word for testicle? <laughs> number three, which carbonated beverage contained the mood-stabilising drug Lithium until 1950. Number four, a combination of star anise, cloves, fennel, cinnamon and souchamp pepper is commonly known as what? Number five, the name for which Indian curry dish prepared with pulses stems from the Sanskrit word meaning to split. Number six, which hot trade mark or brand name is closely associated with the McKinney Company. Number seven, what's the name of the Middle Eastern dip or spread made with chickpeas, sesame paste, garlic, lemon juice and salt? Number eight, with one word, complete the following quote. Charles de Gaulle said, how can you govern a country which has 246 varieties of blank what is the main ingredient of tahini is number nine and number ten other than nutmeg which other spice is obtained from the nutmeg tree and those are your questions on very tricky food and drinkage so time for another bonus question who what not who, what, 
is the most common street name in Britain. Now, think about this carefully and you'll get it. Rush it and you'll blow it, my friends. Think about it carefully. What is the most common street name, reputedly, in Great Britain? Ever think every town has probably got one. That will get you 10 bonus questions. And judging from some of the screaming I've heard in the street, you after the food and drink round, you might just be needing them. So let's move on to round number three. Who dis den? So I will uh, show you uh, some th people and you have to tell me who they are, but you're not going to see much of them. There's number one to give you an example. You're only going to see a bit of them and the only question you have to answer is who this then? Make that a bit bigger for you. There you go. So, number two. Who dis den? Oh, by the sounds of it, we're heading back to the pantomime round with the booing that's going on. Number three coming up. Who dis den? Little clue, little clue. You ready? It's a lady. Number four looks like that. Who has a smile like that? Who do you reckon? Who do you reckon? It's quite distinctive. Is your next one who dis den? Looking a little bit sinister. Do you recognise this person? Is it a he or a she? That's up to you to decide. Your next one looks a bit like this. Who has a forehead like that? I mean, that is, that is a good old forehead there. Goes all the way from there to there. But who this? What about this one here? Now... This one caught me out, I have to say. Not as much as one coming up, but this one did catch me out. So don't fall into the same trap I did. All right, have a good look. And tell me, who that? Now, this is the one that caught me out big time. I got completely the wrong person. But maybe you will do better. Who is this another quite sinister looking yeah and your next one looks like that who's got an eye like that If you don't know, it's always worth a guess. Always worth a guess. Your next one looks a bit like that. Mm. Have a good look and tell me who is this? Oh, 
there are some stinkers in this bunch i have to say not not them personally you understand it just quite tricky so how did you get on there was 10 famous people there have a quick think and i'll give you a quick recap <laughs> So let's have a quick look at the uh, people again. So you can uh, have a closer look. Number one, look like that. Who's that? This for number two. Boo, indeed. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six, number seven, number eight, number nine. Oh, have you changed your mind on number nine? And number ten. Ten famous people, and all you have to do is work out who they are. Right then, time for another bonus question. Worth 10 points. Globally, which four-letter word ranked number four in Google searches in 2020? Right, think back to last year. It's not that difficult to do. This year looks very similar, to give you a clue. And think what four-letter word was the fourth most Google searched word in the world. And if you know, you'll get 10 points. 10. And now, my friends, it is the return of one of your favourite rounds. It is time for What's in My Pocket. If you don't know about this game, well, I am. I'm famous for having very deep pockets. That doesn't mean I'm generous. It just means I keep an awful lot of weird stuff in them. Basically, it's an excuse to get lots of blurry pictures of close-up objects on the screen and pretend they're coming out my pocket, but don't tell anyone. All right? Right, our little secret. Have a look at the object. Have a workout at what it is. Write it down, and you get a point. It's simple as that. Here's your first one. All right, I reckon these ones are a bit easier this time. What is it? What have I got in my pocket? Oi! That is number one. Number two is this one. All right, this is a bit harder, so have a good look. What is that? There are lots of said item there. All right, there is more than one of them, if that helps. Number three is this. What this? Oh no, we changed the name to what's in my pocket, that's right. That's number three. What would you call that? Number four. Now, this is a tricky one. Make sure you have a good look at that. All right, there are some distinctive markings which should give it away. But it is still quite tricky. All right, don't want you to get stuck on this one. He said, giving a gratuitous clue. Number five, that looks like that. Number five. 
And number six looks like that. Right. Now, this one I know Mrs. Malone has seen a lot of during lockdown. But do you know what it is? Number seven is one of them. Right, have a good look. I guess it depends on which device you're playing on as to how easy you'll find in this round. Number eight looks like that. That's number eight. But what is it? What is it? And if you don't know, go on, have a guess. Number nine. Oh, oh hello. Probably best to look at that one a bit closer. What do you reckon that is? Mm. And then number 10 looks a bit like that. Probably the easiest one of the round because I'm feeling generous. What is that? Or maybe it's not easy. It could be so many things. What do you reckon? There are 10 objects that just came out of my deep pocket. And all I want to know is what are they? So a quick recap for you. Number one was that one. Number two was that one. That's number three. Number four looked a bit like that. And number five looked like that. Number six was one of them. Mm. Number seven was those. Number eight was that thing. Number nine was that. And right at the top was that one. Ten objects, and all you have to do is write down what they are. And here is your next bonus question for ten points. The words pandemic, panora, pantomime and plethora all contain the Latin word pan. But what does pan mean? mean in English and by that I don't mean what is a pan I mean what does the Latin word pan translate to in English it's worth 10 points no googling no cahooting with people who aren't in your team and no canoodling either thank you very much and right on time we move into our final round everybody's favorite out of tune alfie everybody's favorite apart from me i might add in this round i will sing some lyrics to some well-known songs the slight issue is i can't sing for toffee or chocolate or crisps or wagon wheel or anything i just can't sing so will you be able to identify what the song is good luck everyone number one i used to rule the world seas was rise when i gave the word <clears throat> Historically, people have found it easier just to read them and block their ears up, which I think is quite rude. But there you go. I used to rule the world. Seas would rise when I gave the word. Is number one. Number two. So I start a revolution from my bed. 
Cause she said the brains I had went to my head. Oh, I forgot to mention. One point for the song, one point for the so two points for every question in this round. One point for the song and one point for the artist. So, what's the name of the song and who is the singer to So I start a revolution from my bed Because she said the brains I had went to my head. I think you can safely say that my singing has not improved in nine months. Number three. It's on America's torture brow that Mickey Mouse has grown up a cow. Some of those notes were right, I reckon. No, apparently not. It's on America's torture brow that Mickey Mouse has grown up a cow, cow, cow. A cow. Name the song and name the singer and you'll get yourself two points. That's how you get to 100, you see. Right then, how about this one? I got my first real six string. Body at the five and dime. <sighs> name the singer, name the song. I'll give it to you again. Turn those speakers up nice and loud. The neighbours will love you for it. I got my first real six string. Put it at a five and dime. <coughs> That's enough of that. Right. Here's your next one. I work all night. I work all day to pay the bills I have to pay. Ain't it sad? You got that? That's an easy one. I work all night, I work all day to pay the bills I have to pay. Ain't it sad? Right then, here's the next one. Poor old Johnny Ray. Sad he sat up on the radio, but he moved to parts in a million ways. That's wrong, isn't it? That's the way I sing it. Poor old Johnny Ray. Sad he sat up on the radio, but he moved a million hearts in my... I'm sure that's wrong, but you get the idea. We'll just go for the first bit. Or oh, turn it up louder. Right, assuming all the dogs in your street haven't started causing chaos, I'll give you your next one. It goes like this. I sat on the roof and kicked off the moors. Well, a few of them verses where they got me quite cross. Name the singer and name the song. And if you can, you're a better man than me. Gunderdean. Be warned everyone, your next one is coming up. I've got to remember the tune to this one. We watch the show we watch the shows. Hang on, hang on. I got it. We watch the shows. We watch the stars on video for hours and hours. We hardly need to use our ears. Yeah. I bet you wish you didn't now. But what's the song and what's the singer? And as we creep up, Here's your next one. Here come old flat top, he come grooving up slowly. He got juju eyeball, he got only roller. What's that? 
Mm. I was vaguely like it, I reckon. Here come old flat top, he come, grooving up slowly, he got juju eyeball, he won, holy roller, he got. <laughs> ah, yeah. Right then, you ready for your very last one? You know I'm just a fool who's willing to sit around and wait for you. Now, I reckon my singing helps there, because if you just read that, it's quite difficult, right? But when you hear, you know I'm just a fool who's willing to sit around and wait for you. <coughs> right then, those were your uh, songs. I think they were still counted as songs. Have a little think on those and I'll give you a quick recap. So I'll give you a quick recap on those and I'll just give you the lyrics just uh, in case that actually helps. In some cases, you might find it will. I used to rule the world, seas would rise when I gave the word. That's number one. In a number two, so I'll start a revolution from my bed because you said the brains I had went to my head. Number three, it's on America's tortured brow that Mickey Mouse has grown up a cow. Number four, I got my first real six string, bought it at the five and dime. Number five, I work all day, I work all night to pay the bills I have to pay, ain't it sad? I work all night, I work all day to pay the bills I have to pay, ain't it sad? Then it was poor old Johnny Ray, sounded sad upon the radio, but he moved a million hearts in mono or something vaguely like that. I sat on the roof, kicked off the moss, well a few of the verses, they got me quite cross. Who sang that? And what's the name of the song? Write it down quick, because the answers are coming up. We watch the shows, we watch the stars on videos for hours and hours. We hardly need to use our ears. Then it was, here come old flat top. He come grooving up slowly. He got juju eyeball. He won roll, holy roller. At top of the shop, you know I'm just a fool who's winning to sit around and wait for you. What was the song and who was the singer to? And that is your big juicy quiz for Wednesday the 6th of January. Yes, the first of Lockdown 3's big quizzes. And I bet you all want to know the answers so we can hear you groaning down the street tonight. Here we go then. The answers are coming up. Right then, one point for each correct answer in the first round, which was all about pantomimes. What turned Dick Whittington to, to what told Dick Whittington to turn again? It was the bells, it was the bells, the bow bells. Giving me a chance to another gratuitous plug for Dick Whittington, the cartoon and the podcast at dickwhittington.co.uk right now. It's all in aid of the Shooting Star Children's Hospice, so head there straight after the quiz if you haven't seen it yet, and more importantly, if you haven't donated yet. Right, number two was 
the pantomime which Maid Marian appears in, well, Robin Hood is not a pantomime, so it must be a different one. And the answer is Babes in the Wood. Babes in the Wood is the answer. Number three, in Cinderella, what's the name of Prince Charming's friend or consort or cohort? Word of the year. It's Dandini. Dandini. Dandini Minogue. Jack and the Beanstalk. What does Jack get in exchange for his mother's cow? What was it? It was magic beans. Magic beans. Mrs. Malone's got some of them. Well, one anyway. The name of Aladdin's mother? Well, it's Widow Twanky. And the Sleeping Beauty pricked her finger and then she fell asleep. Pretty easy, pretty easy. Name was in the title. Cinderella's godmother turns into a coach, a whopping great pumpkin. I bet you all got that. And the tricky one, the sweetheart of a harlequin, of the harlequin. In English pantomime is called ready to kick yourself, ready to kick yourself, Columbine. Oh, I know, I know. You either know it or you don't. A bit like all quiz questions, really. The gingerbread house that was eaten by Ansel and Gretel, greedy pigs. They were the ones who ate the gingerbread house. And the name of Aladdin's nemesis is, 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 is Abanaza. As always, uh, the answers I give you are final. There will be no discussions entered into. The answer is Abanaza. The answer was Babes in the Wood. We'll have no arguing. If you got it right, give yourself a tick. And if you didn't, well, get yourself another glass of wine. <laughs> Right, your first bonus question. How did you get on? The most successful record ever made in the world. A little bit topical because it was White Christmas by Bing Crosby. Ten points if you wrote White Christmas. Ten. Ten points. Generous or what? Right, then we got on to the tricky round for tonight. Food and drink. Some interesting questions, but what answers did you get? The majority of beer made by monks is made in Belgium. Don't know why, don't know why. The name of a fruit which stems from a native Central American word for testicle <coughs> is avocado. Mm. Well, I'm not saying anything really, but next time you're eating an avocado, you'll see what I mean. Right. The carbonated beverage that contained lithium until 1950, it wasn't the obvious one or two. It was 7-Up. Who got it? Who got it? Ooh, if you did, well done. And a combination of star anise, cloves, fennel, cinnamon and sushan pepper is far better known as five spices. Chinese five spice, five spice powder, any of those, you'll get the point. The name for the Indian curry, made of pulses, which means to split in Sanskrit, is dal. Dal. Spell it how you like, it's dal. And the hot thing, you would see the name McKinney Company written on. Well, that's Tabasco. Tabasco sauce. You go and look and it'll probably have that name on it. And the name of the Middle Eastern dip or spread or main meal. Usually maybe chickpea, sesame paste, garlic, lemon juice and salt. You all got it. Yes, it's hummus. Hummus. And Charles de Gaulle 
once said, how can you govern, how can you govern a country that has 246 varieties of uh, cheese? That, that was me doing French, by the way. And the main ingredient of a tahini is sesame. Linking nicely back to the pantomime round, I think you'll find. I gave you a good clue on the next one. The other spice that you get from nutmeg that's not nutmeg is mace. And you will have got yourself one point for every one of those you got right. And for any you didn't get right, you'll get absolutely nothing. Ah, still can't reach it. Right. Then we had your bonus question. The most common name for a street in Britain. Did you get it? It's High Street. High Street, most common. Of course it is, when you think about it. Don't shoot the messenger. It is a quiz. Right then, moving on. Who dissed it? I showed you bits of ten people and you had to guess who they were. No, sorry. I had to intelligently work out who they were. Well, number one, that was David Beckham. Number two, all in the news, just a little bit at the moment. That's Donald Trump. Number three, oh, it's a lady, but which lady is it? It's Adele. Then we had that one. Did you work out that smile? Belongs, sorry, your highness, uh, belongs to Prince William. And did you work out that eyeball was Hillary Clinton? Now then, a big forehead. A very big whopping forehead and blonde hair. Mm. Did you get Richard Branson? That's who it was, Richard Branson. And this one. Pinky old lips, but whose are they? They are Jennifer Lopez, J-Lo to her friends. And now the one that caught me out. This one here looks remarkably like someone else, I thought. I thought it was Michael Douglas, but it's not. It's Vladimir Putin, isn't it? And now, this one will have caught a few people out. Who is this? Hands up if you wrote down a girl. Because that was Justin Bieber. Oh, I know. And this one, well, that one belonged to Katy Perry. How did you get on? Ten points were up for grabs there. Add up how many you got. That'll be the ones with all the text by it, remember. And then we had another bonus question worth ten points. Four letters that everybody last March started looking for. What was it? The answer is Zoom. I can hear a few. Of course it was. Oh, and some smash crockery as well. Don't beat yourself up too much. There's always next week. Right. Then we had what is in my pocket. And there were some sneaky ones in here. Number one looked like that. And that was an electric toothbrush. Number two was that one. Mm. Did you work out that was a row of staples? Yeah. I always keep those in my pocket. Part of a staple diet. The next one was that, which would have fitted nicely in our food and drink round because it was a pasta scoop. And then this one, this is a little bit tricky, but did you work out it's a stick of glue or a print stick or if you wrote anything like that, you get the point. As long as it's got the word glue or print or sticky. This one, well, that is a hand blender or a food blender. And this one, it's empty, but it once was a glass of wine. So that's the empty glass. Wine glass, empty glass, anything like that, you get the point. This one here was pretty straightforward. If you worked out, it was, in fact, a set of chopsticks. 
And this, this one was a lighter. Did you get it? And this one, looking slightly rude at times, depending on the angle, but that's a candle, not yet lit. So unlit candle, candle, anything like that, you get the point. And top of the shop is an electric fan. And then we had our bonus question. The words pandemic, Pandora, pa Pandora, panorama, pantomime and plan, plan, yeah, they put these in just to wind me up. What does the word pan mean in English? When it's translated from Latin, it's quite simple. It's all. If you put all or everything, that'll do. You get 10 points. And then we came to everybody's favourite. Well, deaf people anyway. Out of tune, Alfie. I used to rule the world. Seas would rise when I gave the word. That's Coldplay. Viva la vida. One point for the singer. One point for the song. So I'll start a revolution from my bed. Because you said the brains I had went to my head. That is those boys. Yes. Oh, aces don't look back in anger. One point for each singer and song. It's on America's torture brow that Mickey Mouse has grown up a cow. There's only one man on this earth who could get away with that and make it a massive hit. David Bowie, Life on Mars is your answer. Then we had, I got my first real six string, bought it at the five and dime. The answer being Brian Adams. Summer of 69. I work all night, I work all day to pay the bills I have to pay. Ain't it sad? That's ABBA and money, money, money. Poor old Johnny Ray sounded sad upon the radio, but he moved a heart million. I think that's wrong, but you get the idea. Poor old Johnny Ray was Dixie's Midnight Runners and come on Eileen. Come on Eileen. What about this one? I sat on the roof, kicked off the moss. Well, a few of the verses, they got me cross. That's Elton John and your song. We watch the shows, we watch the stars on videos for hours and hours. We hardly need to use our ears. That's Queen and Radio Gaga. And here come old Flat Top. He come grooving up slowly. He got... Do, do I bought that is Beatles, the Beatles, and come together. And did you get it? You know I'm just a fool who's winning to sit around and wait for you. You'll be singing this all night long now. That's Olivia Neutron Bomb, hopelessly devoted to you. So there was a hundred points up for grabs there. How did you get? on anything with a tick by it add them all up and if you're watching on the facey bookie stick your scores in the comment section so everybody can gloat at how well they did and we'll be back next wednesday to do it all again with all your favorite rounds back on the old telly box See you next Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. Stay safe, stay happy and stay juicy. <laughs>